guys, welcome back to the channel. Check out what I have sitting here on the bench today. Uh, I just want to give you a thorough review of this, give you some sort of background and history of what this quad is all about and uh, where we are today with it. So you're looking at the MANA 285. It is by a Chinese company. Uh, I don't even know the name of them, but this is very similar to a Vortex 285. And if you know your quadcopter history, about two years ago now, Immersion RC released something called the Vortex 285, and it sort of set new standards for FPV racers, uh, RTF FPV racers in general. So this one is something that is very similar. It looks like it would actually fit parts from the 285 on here, like color kit upgrades for the sides. A lot of us were doing what we called pimp kits at the time, and you could put a variety of different colors on the Vortex 285s. Now, it's kind of cool because it looks extremely similar to that original Vortex 285. Uh, it does have the folding arms on here, so some guys that would crash would just bend the arm back. And at the time, we were looking for something like that because we were tired of breaking arms and having to replace things. But but uh, after a few years in FPV racing, it's kind of become the standard that if you break an arm, you just pop a new one on there. But if you break one of these arms, it looks like you can get new plastic parts, uh, maybe from immersion that would actually fit on this particular quadcopter. And that's kind of cool, but it folds down to a pretty small profile. You just fold the arms back just like this and you're ready for transport. It fits in a pretty small case like that. And the props can stay on when you fold it back. Now it does come with some single blade props. I believe they are five inch props on there. Um, so pretty standard size prop will fit on this 285. And it's also running clean flight on here. So you can go in and change your PIDs and you can change your radio settings. It also accepts PPM and S bus on here. So that's kind of cool. I have an FR Sky S bus X4R on here for our field testing today. And in just a little bit, we'll take it out and do some line of sight field testing because these motors on here, they're super beefy. Uh, and it has, the Vortex 285 had tons of power, uh, almost too fast for some short course racing. But out in a big open field, you have a 600 milliwatt transmitter on here. So you can do some massive uh, big field flying with this 285. If you have plenty of space, like a baseball field or a football field, something about that size, you have plenty of boost with this power system on here. Now it's also sporting a 700 TVL camera on here, which is really, really nice. You also have inboard built-in OSD for your battery telemetry, what mode you're in, and I believe you can also bring up some horizon, some artificial horizon on there as well. So kind of neat. It has minimum OSD on here, it's programmable. It also has an OSD reset button over here on the left or on the right hand side of the quad. And it does have LEDs in the rear as well. So you have flashing LEDs back here. Those are also programmable. And you're gonna to have to use an older version of Clean Flight to program this. Uh, the new version 2.0, doesn't work on my computer it was saying that it had an older version on here and that needs to be updated so if you can get to the boot button on this guy you could update the firmware to the latest version now I opened it up and I couldn't find that there was a boot button in here maybe if someone else on the channel that's watching this has one of these maybe they can let us know where the boot button is or if there's two tabs that we have to solder that would be great share that with other people and then you can get your firmware updated but for right now it's ready to fly. It has my X7 already bound up to it. And all I need to do is plug in the battery, put the props on and go fly. Now, a couple other things I wanted to show you before we go out and fly this quad is the fact that it has this huge action cam couch right here, and it's also dampened. So you're gonna get really smooth video. You might have to take like a piece of foam and put on here just to prop it up a little bit and give it a little better camera angle, but it looks like it's gonna accept just about any type of camera I wanna put on there, uh, any type of Mobius, or if you wanna put a Run Cam 3 on there, you could do that with a little bit of tilt just like that. It'll fit the Run Cam 2 on there as well. Put a piece of foam on it, give yourself a little tilt like that. And it looks like it'll fit just about any GoPro up here. You can also buy alternate couches that fit on here that are actually made for the GoPro and protecting your GoPro lens while you're flying on the Vortex uh, style quad. 
Now the Mana 285 does come with some pretty standard props on here. These are 5045, so if you're looking for replacements, you can get these. You can also run tri props on this one if you wanted to, but for our testing today, we're just going to keep it fair and go out and do some single blade test with the Mana 285. Now I've got it bound up with my X7 and I have a 4S 1300 on here. You can run a 3S 2200 on here as well because it does have a pretty long body on here. Look at all this cargo space. You have an extra inch of room back here to fit like a 3s 2200 so if you're new to this you start out with 3s and then work your way up to 4s and it's going to give you a lot more punch with 4s uh, now also on the back we do have built-in leds they should be changeable inside clean flight or the minimum osd setting uh, also here if you want to change your vtx settings you can change your band by holding down this button just tucked under here on the right hold it down and you'll change bands E to F, A, and so on. Now, and you'll also see on here, if you press one time, press once, and it'll actually change the channel that you're on. And I can go all the way back around to eight. You'll have eight channels on each band. Also on the left-hand side over here, there's another little tiny button, and that turns on and off your OSD display. So if you don't want to fly with OSD, or you want to turn it back on, press that button again, and it should turn back on the OSD. So let's go outside real quick and do a quick flight test. All right guys, here we are at the field with the MANA 285, and I'm super excited because I did a flight test, a line of sight flight test before I started recording on the GoPro and it flies really, really smooth and sounds really great in the air. So I'm super excited to show you guys this quad, this little flight demo. I have my fat sharks over here behind me, hiding in the shade with the DVR recording. So you're gonna get to see some onboard footage as well and see how nice this 700 TVL camera looks. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and give it a launch. We'll come up in stability mode, and then we'll play around with horizon and acro modes. So let's go ahead and take off. Here we go. Now look at how smooth this thing is just flying right beside me. Really nice looking aircraft. And it's on 4S right now. Like I said, you can fly it on 3S. And by the way guys, check this out. Just going to go ahead and land for a second here. Listen to this. It does have a beeper on board as well. So if I lose it out in this tall grass today, I can walk straight to it because I'll be able to hear the beeper. That's excellent. So here we go. Let's do a little punch out for you guys. Real time punch out. Here we go. One, two, three. Not bad. I have the rate set up to about 70. You can also really see those LEDs on the back of it quite well. So let's go ahead and do a punch out again. This motor sounds super beefy. One, two, three. Pretty wild. I'm using a Lumineer Graphene 1300 battery. It's gonna be plenty of power for this quad. Really smooth flying. So I'm gonna go ahead now and put it in horizon mode. And I have the rate set to about 7.0, if you're wondering what I have my rate set to. Now remember in horizontal mode, it's gonna allow you to do flips. It's also gonna give you some stability when you come back around out of that flip. If you're in full acro, you have no recovery mode. It's just gonna keep going in the direction that the stick was originally pointed. So in other words, no stability. Look at that. Nice big loops. Still flying in acro. Pretty fast quad. And these are great trainers. If you're just getting into FPV, they are nice because you can, you have enough body on there that you can add quite a large battery and just enjoy the flying outside of racing. If you're not into racing, like I said, the 285 is kind of big for in close and proximity flying. So, you know, if you're flying this for your first FPV style quadcopter, this is nice because you can go way out in the field with this 
with a full-size receiver and really enjoy just flying FPV for the sake of flying. Now I also have my failsafe set up to drop so I would suggest you do the same on your MANA 285. Look at that punch out. Becomes a spec pretty quick. LEDs make it nice because if you're learning how to fly line of sight for the first time, it's nice to have those LEDs on the back because you can always figure out what's the front and the rear. Now I've told guys on my channel that have just watched my channel for the first time before how to recover a quad when it's way out there and you can't tell what direction it's facing. If you use your yaw stick, you can spin the quadcopter around just like that and use the right stick, left, right, forward and back to see which way would be left and right. And what you're trying to do is figure out where the rear of the quad is in that type of recovery if you get way out there line of sight. If you get it to go left and you see it's going left and you get it to go right you know it's going right then obviously the rear is facing you so all the controls would be back to your normal stick configuration. You could just pull back on the back stick and have it come back to home. Now these don't have GPS on there so there is no return to home or anything like that. This is purely for fun flying enjoyment. Now if this quad gets low on voltage, it should have a low voltage alarm beeper as well, so you're not going to destroy your battery, but you've got onboard OSD as well, so you get down below your normal battery level, you know to bring it in and land it. Right now it's giving me a preliminary warning, you can hear it beep just a little bit, hear that beep, what a cool looking quad in the air. So as your voltage drops, and I, I'm not looking at my goggles right now so I'm not sure what voltage we're at, but as your voltage drops it's going to get more aggressive, that beep is going to become way more aggressive. So I'm just going to come over here to the landing pad and set it down, cut the throttle. So a lot of times I like to have my arming switch uh, as a switch instead of right stick arm. And these normally come up set up to right stick arm uh, down and to the right. If you disable that in clean flight, that's probably what I would recommend doing, uh, having it on a switch instead. But you're able to fly all the different modes on this MANA. Tunable in clean flight. You can change up your PIDs. But so far, out of the box with this standard setup, everything seems to fly smooth and fly well, especially on 4S battery. But that's about it for this review guys, thanks for hanging out with me and hopefully I can show you another cool quad coming up in the next video. Hope you enjoyed checking out the MANA 285. I'm Justin Davis guys, I will see you on the next one.